Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. So I thought I would divide uh, Nonfiction November into two videos and this is my check-in for the first two. I'm basically trying to work on making shorter videos for my sake when editing and for your sake. So the first book that I read was for the challenge of self. And for this challenge, I've chosen Walking in this World, The Practical Art of Creativity by Julia Cameron. As I mentioned in my TBR, Julia Cameron is also the person who invented the morning pages. It's something kind of trending on YouTube in general where people journal in the morning when they get up and just kind of do like a brain dump just to kind of clear your head. And it's very creatively stimulating, but also kind of relaxing because you feel like you have externalized all your worries and problems on paper and you can start your day with a clear mind. In this book, uh, she does talk about the morning pages again, but it kind of focuses more on trying to get you as a person to figure out who you are before the world told you who you should be and to kind of pinpoint your strengths and your creative spots and also to kind of tackle some myths and insecurities. So I'll give you an example. One of the chapters focuses on day jobs and how a lot of people seem to live under the um, impression that to be a successful artist, you have to, you know, quit your day job and just go and be an artist and be a painter or uh, just stay at home for months on end and be a writer. And she says, you know, this is just not true for the majority of people who have been successful in the art. And she'll take a few examples, you know, like writers like Faulkner or whoever. And she'll say they had a day job or a night job and then they found moments in between or at lunch and she uses kind of these examples to highlight just how much you could get done and you should never allow this sort of lack of time to influence you or stop you from trying to do your creative work. I find that very encouraging, especially now where um, people have many more activities to do or things to get done and, and work days are stretched out eight hours plus over time sometimes. And to just kind of remember that you can find these creative moments. It's like a kind nod to everyone out there who's been dreaming of becoming an artist. And then the book is kind of filled with a lot of uh, fill in the blanks in terms of what you like, what you don't like, what inspires you. Um, and you get to kind of figure out more about yourself which is again why i chose this book for this challenge and i guess for that reason it's very awkward to kind of fully review this book because it's more of a creative workbook for one person one of the things that she prompts you to do and this is kind of something she urges you to do once or twice a week if you can is to deliberately go out for a walk and take a walk in a way that's not you going anywhere specifically but just taking a walk for a walk's sake and how this will help you be creative and clear your mind and this has resulted in me taking a few walks and i encounter a lot of birds and even a blue heron and the handiwork of mr beaver and I even took a walk in the snow because Canada. And it's actually been so nice to go on a walk uh, without actually aiming to go anywhere, but just to kind of clear your head and try to just observe the world around you. It's almost like taking some time to meditate or some time for yourself. And that's been really nice. And then she has like at the end of every chapter, these kind of four points where you check in with yourself. So she'll say, you know, did you take your weekly walk? Did you do your morning pages? There is one thing that I should mention just because I'm talking about it on public platform is that this book is a little bit religious sometimes. It's not preachy or religious in the sense of talking about biblical things, but there will be many times where she'll refer to the grand creator or God and she'll reflect on that whether it's about gratefulness or about being in tune with the grand creator and if you're not into language like that or into people who believe in God or if you think that that might be off-putting for you or if you think that that might encourage you to pick it up. Um, I just thought I should mention that because, I mean, it all comes down to like what kind of person you are. But 
uh, that was this workbook. For my second challenge of nonfiction November, I have chosen the micro or macro, which was another choice we had. And for this, I chose micro. And what is more micro than seeds? I listened to the audiobook The Triumph of Seeds by Thor Hansen. This audiobook was seven and a half hours long, and I couldn't listen to it all in a row because it's kind of like, you know, dense. But I did listen to it between places, um, you know, going to groceries or on a train. And eventually I finished it and I was actually surprised because it, it is a lot shorter than most audiobooks, that's for sure. So Hansen starts off the book by explaining how his young son was obsessed with seeds and how this got his attention because he was looking for a new subject to tackle. And he became kind of fascinated with seeds as a form to kind of bond with his son, but also because he realized that they were very, very interesting. And he looks at the history of mankind and how seeds were present since the moment we took up farming and how seeds have mutated over time, how certain fruits and vegetables have changed, how fruits and vegetables have changed post-colonialism where things were kind of traded from one uh, side of the world to another. And the most interesting part to me was when he started to really zoom out and focus on how seeds in themselves are so important uh, because they're the essence of what causes a lot of social and political revolts. So what I mean by that is that he looks at famine or droughts and things like that and he'll say, you know, when you have a famine, it's not because you have a lack of antelope and cake. When you have a famine, you actually have the inability to grow crops because the seeds have been damaged in the soil or the crops have been uh, neglected in some way. And obviously the title, like the full title, includes kernels as well and corn and grains. So he will look at the kind of social history of grains as well, but it looks at it from its kind of seed formation and how the seeds survive in the soil. And he kind of takes it apart bit by bit, looking first at the super micro parts where it's the seed in itself and how it's surviving. And then it kind of looks outwards as to the results, the social consequences. Uh, what I really, really liked about this book was that he interviews a lot of people who are so passionate about what they're doing and they're so interested in these things. He interviews, for example, the, the editor of the Encyclopedia of Seeds. And to think that there's a person whose entire life is just focused on just this one topic and how he was answering all these questions with so much passion or um, the research that they were doing on certain grains it was just so fascinating. But also there were things that I didn't realize is that some of these people are kind of called upon by the food industry or big companies that are selling food to all of us and they are kind of called in as experts for certain crops or certain judgment calls. All in all, it was a very enjoyable audiobook. I really liked learning about seeds and kernels and grains and I'll never think about them the same way. And it was a very good choice for the micro part of Nonfiction November. I hope you enjoyed this video and um, let me know if they got your attention at all or if you think you may or may not pick this up. Thank you again, and I hope to see you soon in my next video. Bye!